Good evening and welcome to the Town of Scarborough Planning Board meeting for January 5th, 2015. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Where is it? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, could you uh, please take the roll? Mr. DuPont? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mazur? Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Wood? Here. Ms. Oglis? Here. Thank you. A couple of quick notes. First, I'd like to welcome Mike Wood back to the board. Yes. As some know, he has served this board in the past and served it very well, and it's great to have him on board again. Um, also, I'll note that both Mr. Wood and Ms. Oglis will be voting members this evening. And was, as was mentioned just before we call the meeting to order, we do have one item, item number six, uh, which has been tabled at the request of the applicant, Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland. So we'll not be doing that one tonight. Um, next item on our agenda is the approval of minutes from the December 8th, 2014 meeting. Is there any motion discussion? to approve? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. We have, with uh, one abstention, Mr. DuPont was not present. Thank you. Next item on our agenda, this being the first meeting of the new year, is the election of planning board officers. And I'll turn this over to Mr. Chase. Sure. At the uh, end of the last meeting, the current uh, uh, board secretary, Mr. Mazur, uh, offered up a slate of officers, and that slate was as follows. Uh, Mr. Fellows as chair. Mr. Mazur as Vice Chair, and Mr. DuPont as Secretary. Um, so i just offer that for, to the Board for your discussion. I'll make a motion to nominate the slate. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you very much. Item number five is a consent item. Reapproval of Griffin Road Development LLC subdivision for a 36-unit senior housing project at 5 Griffin Road. Jay? Yep. Just by way of uh, brief background, uh, the application was approved by the board in July of 2014. Uh, the need for reapproval is due to the fact that the statutory timeline for recording the mylar has run out. Uh, basically, our ordinance requires that you record a mylar within 90 days of the approval date, and that time elapsed. Um, so, um, so the application, the, the ostensibly the, the program hasn't changed at all. The board's just being asked to reapprove the subdivision plan. Um, I will just note that there were a couple of conditions that were um, originally approved in July that have been satisfied. One is to revise the plans uh, per the board's discussion and staff comments that had been accomplished after the July meeting. Um, as has the uh, letter of authorization from the Dunstan Plaza uh, property owner. Um, as you'll note, that was a big part of the board's discussion was making improvements at the Route 1 and Griffin Road intersection area through that uh, property. Um, with that, staff has drafted a brief motion for the board to consider, um, if you're so inclined. Thanks, Jay. Does the applicant have anything to add at this point? Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, Rocky Rispera. Never miss an opportunity to add. Um, <laughs> not really. Um, it was 91 days by the time we met all of the conditions, and the ordinance says 90. So that's why we're back. One day. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from the board? All right. Again, pretty straightforward. So I'll make a motion. I move to reapprove the subdivision plan titled Griffin Road Senior Housing revised December 17, 2014, with the acknowledgement that the findings and applicable conditions from the Planning Board's July 14, 2014 notice of decision remain effective. The site plan elements shall be developed in accordance with the detailed plan set dated September 8, 2014, which was re revised based on the Planning Board's condition of a conditional approval of July 7th, July 14th, 2014. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. We will be 
signing that plan at the end of this meeting. All right. Item number six, as we mentioned, was tabled. Item number seven, Morrison Developmental and Educational Center requests an amended site plan amendment review for 60 Chamberlain Road. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as just noted, uh, let's see, this is for an expansion at the existing uh, school at the intersection of Chamberlain and Highland Avenue. Uh, the site was originally approved by the board in 2007. It's within the R2 zoning district and is permitted use there, therein. Um, as mentioned, the applicant, is, or as, as noted in the applicant's submission, they're requesting to add to the building about 3,900 square feet plus some uh, site improvements to the parking lot. Uh, in advance of the meeting, you should have received comments from planning staff, Woodard and Kern, the town's uh, peer review engineer, and uh, traffic solutions, uh, traffic peer review engineer. Um, ostensibly, questions that were flagged and sort of the, in those really re revolve around the, uh, the need for the additional parking spaces, just trying to understand the, the, the uh, programmatic uses that trigger those needs, um, and assuring that um, stormwater provisions are adequately being provided for um, and treatment considered of the forest pavement areas that are on site. There is one area um, that's forest pavement that I'm sure the applicant will sort of highlight for us. Um, with that, I will turn it back to the board. Thanks, Jay. And I'll welcome the applicant. Thank you. My name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates. I represent the Morrison Center. Uh, Mark Ryder, the executive director of the Morrison Center, is here, as well as Ben Walter, the architect from CWS. Uh, as Jay mentioned, the Morrison Center was approved in 2007. The site plan was approved in 2007, and it's been in operation since uh, 2009. Uh, the, the educational facility is uh, roughly a 31,000 square foot building on a seven acre parcel located at the corner of Highland Avenue and Chamberlain Road. Um, and the center currently is in the process of uh, restructuring their current space due to increased uh, programs. Um, the 2007 approved site plan included uh, there were three areas where we delineated future additions as part of their future growth plan. Uh, which totaled uh, approximately 4,700 square feet of uh, it future additional uh, building space. And uh, so the amendments that we are proposing in this amended site plan uh, include, number one, a small addition uh, located in this area here. This is, uh, this is Cameron Road and Highland Avenue. future addition is going to be located off to the rear of the building and that uh, totals roughly 3,900 square feet. Uh, the service drive at uh, the rear of the building has to be aligned, oh, I'm sorry, okay. Uh, there will be a slight modification or adjustment of the service drive. Currently it, it uh, is aligned uh, in this direction. We're going to duplicate <coughs> it uh, in that fashion. And then the third item would be an additional 23 parking spaces. Um, the five that Jay referred to uh, that abut the porous pavement, which is located here, are going to be uh, in this location here. Um, they'll be parking here and here. Um, the reason for the, uh, the 23 additional parking spaces is that the Morrison Center has found that during their special events, uh, they, uh, the visitors, there are, there are many more visitors than their, their current daily needs. And uh, they have found that the, uh, the overflow parking is just not working. They're, work they're parking on grass areas uh, along the edges of the, edges of the pavement and forming uh, several ruts. 
so they felt that uh, wherever we could add uh, additional parking uh, uh, would be appropriate for this, uh, this amendment. Um, and also, uh, back when we received the uh, approvals in 2007, we received a DEP stormwater permit, and we are in the process of uh, amending that permit. Uh, we haven't received it yet, but um, it's, it's in the pipeline. Just to review uh, a few of the staff comments, uh, there were three comments that uh, came through from staff. Uh, number one was the parking areas, and I indicated that uh, they, they wanted to know the reason why we wanted, uh, why we needed to add the 23 parking spaces, and I, uh, I just outlined uh, the reason for that. Um, the landscaping, there, are, there will be three, uh, or I'm sorry, six uh, existing ash trees that are located along this drive here that will be transplanted. Uh, five will be placed uh, here, and there will be one placed over here. And then the last comment uh, had to do with architecture, and I'm going to let Ben address that as soon as I'm finished. Uh, Wood and Curran, we've addressed all of their comments. Um, I'll just go down <coughs> quickly. Uh, they wanted to know what the status of the DEP permit uh, is, that uh, we've had a pre-application uh, meeting with DEP, and we are intending to submit the actual amended application uh, tomorrow. Uh, they asked for an inspection of stormwater system and Les Barrier Beach 2M, who is the uh, stormwater engineer on this project has been out and prepared an uh, inspection report, um, which will be submitted, <coughs> actually it has been submitted, but I don't believe you have a copy of it. Uh, third comment from Wood and Curran has to do with the six inch storm drain. They asked us to uh, locate the outlet uh, to the six inch storm drain. We have attempted to do that. Um, I think that it has been buried um, it's only a six inch storm drain that outlets from the footing drain. Um, so it has a very small amount of, of flow in it. But uh, my response to that was, is that we will, uh, we will um, locate it during construction and make any necessary measures for stabilization. Uh, they asked us to add a, a little bit more silt fence uh, uh, in between the addition and the porous pavement, which we have done. And the final comment had to do with the parking space construction. <coughs> uh, and the, uh, this refers to the five spaces that are located here. And those five spaces, because they're adjacent to the porous pavement, uh, they are going to be treated uh, the same way the porous pavement is, which they don't, it does not receive any sand or salt uh, in that area. So um, that's how those five spaces will be maintained. So at this point, I'm going to ask Ben to come up and talk a little about the architecture. Ben Walter, I'm with CWS Architects in Portland. We were the architect for the original building, and we've worked with uh, Morrison Center on several other um, uh, projects throughout uh, the state. Um, what they are doing here, I guess the, the impetus behind this project is that, that there's, a, there's a big de de increased demand for school age uh, care. And what they have in there right now in the back wing is a, uh, an adult program that they're going to move off site into another facility and reuse that space for a school age program uh, with an addition. So that the, the um, school age program will have a lower school and an, and an upper school. 
for two different uh, populations, each with three classrooms. Uh, in, order to, in order to fit it in there, we needed additional square footage. I think John mentioned that we had originally planned for three additions with his original approval, which did, was part of the stormwater approval originally. Uh, this addition is smaller than those three combined, so we're still within that, um, that impervious area that uh, was considered as part of the original approval. It's going to be a very simple addition uh, from our standpoint. We're trying to keep it uh, simple because, A, we need to keep this, project, this facility operating during construction. Um, and what we did originally when we constructed the building is we had, I'm going to pass these out. Um, this is a, an image of the existing building. Can I keep one? I think I have enough for, uh, for everybody. Uh, what we did in terms of the form of the building and the color and the textures of the building is we had a number of different uh, geometric shapes that were part of the building. We had a cylinder for the main entrance rotunda. Uh, we had a, a, um, a uh, like a barrel vault for the, for the covered entrance. We had several uh, pitched roof areas and we had several flat roof areas. Uh, as you can see off to the far right next to the greenhouse, this is a flat roof area next to a pitched roof area. What we're proposing to do for the addition is to basically replicate the same colors, same materials, same window patterns uh, that we used on the original building. In fact, we're going to be relocating some of the windows that are currently installed on this wall into this new wall across <laughs> here. And, um, and we're going to do it as a flat roof building up adjacent to the existing uh, pitched roof portion of this wing over here. Uh, so it will all be in character with what's already there. It's just a, um, an extension of the existing facade. And it will look very similar to what we have going on here right now. Um, you know, architecturally, I think that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I think we're trying to, uh, we recognize that this building can be seen from all directions. Uh, and it's, um, we're going to give it just as much of a front door facade as anywhere else. So that's all I have. Thank you. I think that, that concludes our presentation. Okay. Cool idea answer any questions. All right, thank, thank you. you. Before we move on to board discussion and any questions, uh, this is an item that is uh, available for public comment. If there's anyone here who'd like to speak on this, just ask that you keep your comments to five minutes or less. I'm sensing that there's not. All right, with that then, we'll turn it over to the board and let's start with uh, John. I'm good with this. I mean, it's such a small-scale project. You've answered all the questions that staff, all the concerns that staff had, so I'm okay with it, 100%. Thank you. Susan? I don't have any problems with this. I go by this building a lot, and it's very attractive. I'm not too sure what... Flat roofs surprise me in this, in this environment. I mean, why would you want a flat roof other than a, rather than a pitched roof just in terms of maintenance, and it's hard to tell from what you're showing here what's going to look like from that perspective when you have another flat roof. And the main building is pitched, correct? No. See, it's very hard for me to tell exactly where, from what you've given me to look at, just where this is going to blend pitched with a flat. This is pitched. What we're adding is going to be behind here, which is flat. Mm -hmm. You see my problem? I don't. Well, I don't see it. I think. I think what we're trying. To I think what I was trying to represent. We haven't done a rendering of the rear of the building, and so what we are trying to represent in this drawing is that that we will be doing an addition that'll have a flat roof, and it'll basically be similar to this, and it'll be similar to this where we have a flat roof and how it's adjacent to a pitched roof structure. Um, you know, it's, uh, so, so it will look very similar to that, except for it's on the back side. It's pretty well hidden from both, both the roads. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when, when you have a large expanse of a building, it's very difficult to do pitched roofs. Mm -hmm. And the reason is is because by the time when you have a pitched roof and you're going up, at, let's just say, 6 and 12 or something, by the time you come in, uh, you know, let's just say 30 feet, you know, you're already up very tall, and if you continue to go up and up and up, you end up with this giant amount of volume of space up there. Um, so we have to keep your pitches into uh, to reasonable areas. 
reasonable is location. This, is this a new? This, this was submitted. This elevation that was, was submitted. That was what you submitted yeah. originally. So, uh, no, this is what was submitted yeah, just last oh, week. Oh, okay. So this does include the addition. The addition is shown right over here, and it's shown right over here on this elevation and a little bit around the corner over here. And so what you're looking at in terms of the um, in terms of the location is you'll be you'll be seeing a flat roof addition with a pitched roof behind it. That's gonna fall over. Yeah. Does anybody yeah, care? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna hit the floor. Okay. And um and then, uh, so everywhere you're going to see a flat roof, you're going to see other roofs behind it. Here's the greenhouse behind mm -hmm. that. Here's the other roof. There's this, this pitch on this side. Um, same thing over here. You're going to see a little portion of it where it's sticking out uh, on, the, on the front side. But that, that would be very similar to what you would be seeing in this picture right here where you have a, a flat roof adjacent to a pitched roof. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Just a comment in that. It really was hard to visualize this. Just a note to staff to tell applicants that, you know, I mean, I, I get this, but that's what's there. I didn't get that, but it wasn't in my packet. So, you know, it's one of my major questions is I, I'm very visual. Um, I'm just curious, where are all the adults going? Uh, oh, 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 suitable location in Portland. Just uh, identify yourself for the record. I'm Mark Ryder, the executive director. And Thanks. you found a place in Portland for it? Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure you won't move until you have a place to go. Exactly. Okay. I don't really have any problems with this. Thank you. Thank you. Nick? I don't have anything to add. Thank you. Mike? Uh, just a couple of quick questions. On, on the uh, existing parking, you said uh, the five new spaces is going to be the same material as existing. You call it porous concrete. Uh, the no, the five, five new spaces will be bituminous asphalt. Oh, it will be. Okay. Is the rest of that parking, the existing parking, a porous type of concrete? Is that what I saw? Yes. The rest of this area right here is porous concrete. Uh, but Can it you would describe be that better for me? Or give me an idea what that is. The porous concrete. Right. I know what concrete is. I know what porous means. But yeah. Um, well, it's it's uh, comprised of a larger aggregate, and allows uh, uh, allows water to penetrate down through. Um, it's the same as bituminous asphalt or porous asphalt, rather. Yeah. It's the same. same. And uh, I'm curious, why why didn't you keep with the same material for the the, the five new spaces? It would be it would be cost prohibitive to bring the porous concrete contractor. I think the only one is from New Hampshire into the state to pour you know, five spaces. Everything else is bituminous asphalt. All the other parking spaces. So so the new is going to be concrete to kind of have a visual match. The new no the, the five new spaces will be bituminous concrete. Okay. Yes. Um, and you spoke about um, the need for these spaces because of uh, special events and, and the overflow. Correct. So you're pretty convinced that these additional was, was it 23 you said? 23. Pretty convinced that that's going to meet the need. I'm I'm so t yep. Yeah, I think that that'll be very comfortable for us. We our special events are they're most we open up to the public maybe twice a year. We have our Christmas fair and then maybe some other function in the spring. We also have a retail operation for our greenhouses and and uh, the spring sale brings a lot of traffic in there. Uh, we have uh, because we serve a lot of children and to plan to meet their needs we have what called IEPs, you've probably uh, heard of those. So sometimes that generates 20, 25 meeting participants, and we have those throughout the week, and that's, a, that's an event too. And so it's those, kind of, uh, those kind of meetings and activities, we, also, we have some training, training functions uh, that we sponsor uh, for, for the region and for the state, it's just, those, it's just to accommodate those activities. And I do think that would be a comfortable amount to mom our lawn. In the literature, you uh, you explained how you're changing the use of the facility a little bit, whereby 
the day-to-day -day demand of the facility is going to be less as far as it relates to traffic. Right. But, uh, uh, we but, these, but this overflow need is, is the same, it's the same before as it is as it will be after the, after the addition. Parking overflow, yes. Yeah. Oh. yeah, the traffic is going to change significantly because we have, say, 40 adult participants in the AM session and 40 in the PM, and they're, they're brought to our programs by sometimes RTP, family members, so it's a lot of traffic coming in to drop them off and they come back at 12 o'clock to pick them up and then at 12.30 another 40 are dropped off. So you see th those won't be, there won't be that much activity anymore. Okay. And just one more, sorry, these, these plans are a little bit too small, but uh, the lighting, any, any concerns or uh, efforts made on the uh, new addition as it relates to lighting? Because you said that that building could be viewed from all, all elevations, all sides. Viewed from the uh, from, from, from the public, from, yeah, from other other property owners. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, this is this is quite wooded okay. in here, and uh, I mean, I'm sure during the winter months you can look through the trees. There are filtered views through the trees to this location here. Um, in terms of lighting, uh, there are there won't be any new light fixtures. We are going to relocate one fixture. Um, that's currently here to over to here. Um, well, just assuming that the last seven years uh, have been um, satisfactory for your neighbors and there's been no complaints with light pollution, et cetera. Right. So just just pause for a second, just to make sure that any new lighting or repositioned lighting, you know, is is no no greater a you know impact. To right. The, right. To yep. The other property line. That's all. Yeah, they they uh, they're all cut off okay. light lenses, and uh, so there won't be any light protrusion. Yeah, to interject a little bit too, what we're doing is we're taking the existing light fixtures that are wall-mounted light fixtures, and we're uh, removing them and replacing them on the walls, uh, just a little bit farther out. So right. We have one here, so I think we're replacing over here, one over here. Okay. So so I just see that as moving closer to your back property line, yep. and just you know, will that you know, uh, impact the property. No, they're all cut off luminaires, so they only have a small radius that they'll be able to light anyway. So they're just going to, we're just moving them over to light this, this courtyard area. And there's another door over here. We're going to have it right over there. It's going to light that area in front of the garage, which is blocked by, it's kind of blocked by the garage. So. And I see that the, um, there's, there's a route for emergency vehicles. Mm -hmm. All the way around. That that's not touched at all in this that, addition. That's not touched. There's an emergency access um, drive that goes around the building uh, that won't be disturbed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I think um, questions have been pretty well addressed. I don't really have any concerns with this. I, I do remember when this originally came before the board uh, several years ago, and I think some of us. Maybe struggle a little bit to picture how the design would play out, um, but I, I'd say personally anyway that I think it's been very successful. It's very attractive, and I think you've done a good job of um, making it attractive from from all directions because it is a, a unique site. Right. Uh, so that's important. Uh, I'm also glad to hear that um, that the operation has been successful, and um, again, I think you've uh, done a good job of addressing a few questions that we had and. Um, with that, I will uh, put a motion forward. No, oh, it's just for approval. Motion for, right, this will be a motion for uh, amended site plan approval. I move to approve the amended site plan application of the Morrison Development Center for the addition of 3,900 square feet to the existing school and associated site improvements with the following conditions. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall provide the planning department with a copy of the amended DEP permit. And prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, a maintenance inspection report of the site's approved stormwater facilities, including the six-inch six roof drain outfall and post-construction condition of the porous pavement areas, shall be performed and provided to the planning department. Any necessary maintenance that may be needed shall be performed prior to the issuance of the CO. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck.
Item number seven. I'm sorry, we're on to item number eight. Friends of Scarborough Hockey requests sketch plan review for the development of an ice arena on town-owned property along Clinton Drive. Would you like to introduce this, Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, so as the applicant's material states, the project is sort of a result of a cooperative effort between the Friends of Scarborough Hockey and the town of Scarborough. Friends of Scarborough Hockey is an independent functioning um, uh, Outfit. I'm not sure if it's an LLC or incorporated. So for for now, group of non, folks. Non for profit. Non for profit. Non profit. Um, that's been, as I just mentioned, working with the town council on trying to identify a location on the municipal campus where this uh, activity might be located. I preface. I sort of introduce it in that way t to um, bring the board up to speed is, as to. As part of this review, this is a formal site plan review process by the board. Unlike the elementary school that we reviewed within the last year and a half or two years ago where it was an advisory opinion, this will be a formal site plan review. So we will go through all the T crossing and I dotting. Um, so I just wanted to be sure that folks are aware, though it is on the municipal campus, this is a full review, site plan review. Um, again, uh, as board members, well, no sketch plan is really an opportunity for the applicants to provide the board with an overview, as detailed or not, uh, of, an, of a uh, proposal, um, and for the board to provide uh, guidance to the applicant in terms of what items you think they should highlight or areas of concerns that you're really going to want to focus in on the analysis. This is beginning. Sketch plans an informal submission. It's really the beginning of a process. There will be further submissions should they choose to move forward as a formal application, which um, will then kick off the formal public comment process and, and that sort of thing. Um, staff, in, in reviewing the materials that were provided, uh, highlighted a few issues that uh, we thought we might want to bring uh, to both the board and applicants' attention in terms of uh, stormwater issues that are sort of known in the area and unknown, um, and certainly that's an issue that will, will need to be uh, addressed going forward really understanding sort of the shared parking analysis that has been occurring. Um, and so I guess those are sort of the, the two most prevalent and then just identify that um, for the applicant that, you know, as they move forward, cons consultations with the fire department with regards, regards to fire lanes, emergency access will be needed. Um, and then just flag that this is in the TBC2 commercial design standards do apply or will apply as this moves forward. Um, so uh, with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it's a point well taken about the nature of the application. It's somewhat of a unique situation in that it is would be on municipal land, but this is not a municipal project. And so as Jay pointed out, unlike some other quote-unquote public projects that have come before us, we're going to be doing more than just providing an advisory committee uh, advisory opinion. Uh, I also wanted to note for anyone who may be following this among the public that there will be opportunity going forward for public comment on this as things, assuming things do move forward. Um, uh, that's not part of the agenda tonight, but as this advances beyond uh, sketch and into more detail, we'll have that opportunity. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to the applicant, Mr. Allen. Great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lee Allen uh, with Northeast Civil Solutions, a uh, civil engineering firm. I'm also here uh, with another hat. I'm also on the board of directors for Friends of Scarborough Hockey. Um, this is something I have both my kids play hockey, and this is something very near and dear to my heart. Is, uh, getting up at 3.45 in the morning to get to a hockey practice before school hasn't been that enjoyable for us. I'm also joined tonight by Chuck Bradish, also one of the board of direct, uh, members of the board of directors for Friends of Scarborough Hockey. I um, wanted to just kind of take you through the process that has led us up to this point. Um, probably a year and a half ago, there was an idea generated by a number of us to start um, looking for a site in Scarborough to build a nice arena. Um, kind of has grown from that point. We've gone before the town council. We worked um, with the town manager to come with, up with a memo of understanding, which kind of um, described the roles of Friends of Scarborough Hockey versus the roles that the town would take in this kind of... Uh, a private public partnership, as you will, to construct a nice arena with private funds um, not impacting the tax base, but being able to put that on public land where it seemed to make the most sense. So 
we went through that process. The memo of understanding was approved by the town council. Uh, the next thing was to kind of identify a site within the municipal campus. Um, we looked at a number of sites. One of them was next to the high school. One was where the current flooded pond area they used for hockey during the wintertime or skating in the wintertime. Um, another one was right where the tennis courts are, and the other one is, is where the basketball courts are. So there was a committee comprised of um, the school, school board members, uh, library, community services, uh, and town council members were all involved in a committee to select a site. Um, the um, athletic director was also involved. So we, we went through this process where we rated each of the sites based on our own reasons for why we thought they were better than the other. And the site adjacent to the library um, in the vicinity of the basketball courts where we're currently showing it was the one that ended up being the, the selected site. Um, it was better than the others for uh, quite a number of reasons. And won't bore you the details, but there is a document out there floating around, if, if you'd like, that, that goes through all the pros and cons of each site. So we, we chose this mainly for the, there's a new parking area that's constructed uh, in accordance with the Wentworth School. The predominant parking needs for the ice arena are late weekday nights and weekends, primarily when Wentworth isn't being used. Um, so one of the thoughts that was talked about back and forth with the town manager was, hey, it makes sense to share this parking area. Um, peak demand for the ice arena based on the number of seats, we're talking about 600 plus or minus seats, is about 180 parking spaces. Um, there's gonna be some spaces right adjacent to the building, probably 20 or so, um, plus a drop-off area. Um, that's not shown there now, but we think that's probably where that number will get to. Um, that leaves us, there's 248 parking spaces for, in that Wentworth parking lot, so that, that leaves, you know, 88 spaces that are, if we were at a full event, still unused in that parking lot, which would not coincide with any events happening at, at Wentworth School. As you're aware, most of the concerts and events with Wentworth School are typically held at the high school auditorium. Um, so anybody going to an event at night would be up at the high school and not necessarily down at Wentworth. Uh, stormwater, obviously, uh, the parking lot's already been dealt with in stormwater. There would be a significant amount of runoff based on the, the size of the new building. The, the ice arena building itself is approximately 40,000 square feet. Um, I'd envision probably some subgrade detention to store any increase generated by that building and the uh, surrounding fire lanes, drop off, um, and parking. Uh, one of the unique things about this is that the front of this building faces the Wentworth parking lot where people would park. So the back side would be actually the front fronting on Gorham Road. There was a fair amount of discussion on this. There's some long range plans being talked about putting a community center in. Uh, there would be room to put a, a sizable building between the ice arena and Gorham Road um, that was considered. Um, in, in the short term, I, I think we'd be doing a, a hefty amount of landscaping to screen the back of this so that it would not be very noticeable, um, or as least noticeable as possible. Um, you also notice that the site is in a wa large wetland area. Um, that wetland area, according to the town, is a, it was examined when they did the Wentworth, was a, a very low value wetland. Um, as low as it could get. A lot of it has been man-made and created over the time. That being said, we still need to go through the permitting process to ensure that the, any fill that we do is offset by conservation land. And in this case, I believe that's the, the method that we're going to take to offset the wetland fill, which is roughly eight square feet of conservation land per one square foot of wetland fill. There's also a stormwater permit that's held by the town on the municipal wide campus. We'd also be amending that to deal with any increases um, as, we discuss, as I discussed earlier um, with the new building. Um, with that, I believe in a nutshell, I think that covers a lot of the questions. I'll be certainly happy to answer any questions that, that you might have. Thank you. Let's start this time with uh, Mike. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Hi, Lee. How are you doing? Good. Um, I, too, am a hockey fan. Not only do I like to watch it, but I still play, and I have for the last 40-some-odd uh, years. So This is exciting for me as well. Nevertheless, I'll try to stay within my role as a planning board member. Um, 
There are there are more than a few things that I'm sure the town that belong in the town council's purview. So um, again, strictly from a land use perspective, I got a couple questions or several actually. Uh, with the parking, first of all, um, in the documentation, I think you spoke that uh, we would uh, we would be offered minutes from some of the meetings that you've had with the school board members and others. Um, I'd be interested in seeing those, if that's okay, because I'd like to kind of wrap my arms around how this parking will not conflict with any uh, potential yeah. Wentworth activity. Sure. As part of our formal submission, we're working, Bill Bray is going to be our traffic engineer, and we would do a parking analysis, a parking study to ensure that peak times of the arena do not coincide with peak times or any times at the Wentworth School so that we know we have enough parking. Now, this might be unfair of me to ask you this, and maybe I should be asking this of a school board member or a school official from Wentworth, but I play hockey currently at 7 in the morning on Tuesdays yep. and Thursdays. Now, now, this facility, you, would you foresee this facility being used for, like, a men's league and yeah, things uh, of that nature? I would think that you'd be uh, interested in renting out whenever possible. Yeah, absolutely, but those times typically, I mean, you're not talking 100 cars. You're maybe talking 40 cars. Right. So the 40 cars, there's plenty of excess capacity in that parking lot. There is, to handle okay. that. So that parking lot, that doesn't, that parking lot is not, what, what, 25, 30, 40 percent full during the school day? Yeah, it, it's probably 50 percent, I would say. Just on, as the times I've gone by, I've, I've been paying attention. It's, it's never been full. And uh, maybe you can have this discussion with Bill Bray, but uh, when I when I look at that layout, if I was looking at that, just if you were just bringing this to the board as uh, a um, uh, entity of itself, parking lot and a building. Right away, I see a conflict with the right, of, you know, with the right of way, the the road in front of the building, separated by the parking lot. So what I what I see with that, not Gorm Road or the road that the uh, library is on. Yeah, right there. Is there a name to that? Not no, that's the bus turnout. It's to right. Oh, the, it's, it's the, right. Yes. Is there a name to that road? Have right, they just named call it the connector road. Right okay. Now. <laughs> So when I, I look at that connector road and I see potential conflict with folks walking across that road after they've parked to go to and from yeah. the, the arena. There, there's so going to be significant work and thought put into pedestrian oh. circulation and what are we going to do with that lighting? Is, is yeah. there going to be a push-button signal or something? Because I agree, when the game gets out, there is going to be a significant conflict in right. and out there. Okay. Uh, thank you. And um, I think he spoke to it, but I didn't. I didn't hear any answer per se. But is the fire department going to require some sort of emergency access around the whole building? And if so, does that show on that? So the answer is we haven't talked to the fire department yet. But typically, they require access to at least three sides of a building. Um, right now, we've, we've clearly got it on this side. This side. Probably to here. Okay. We need to work and figure out with them where do they do they would they prefer something done this side? Would they rather have it this way? Okay. There's a couple options to be explored. We're, we're probably just not at that point yet. But before we come back, we would definitely be meeting with them and talking about it because obviously, if you're putting, you know, 650, 700 people to to watch a high school hockey game into an arena, you need to have right. fire department on board to know what's going to happen if right. something had to. And emergency yes, access right. and folks to get out from right. whatever side. Somebody exactly. Um, I'm curious now, in the back, you have that smaller parking lot. I would imagine that might be used by employees and folks that uh, work at the arena. I, I think that's going to remain as, as um, parking for the basketball court. Oh, I thought that was being removed. It's not. Um, only part of it, the, gr the, the little. Oh, it says remaining. Okay. Yeah, this little area right here would be removed just because we need it for the grading. There's probably a six or eight foot fill that has to happen to bring the grade up. If you go by here, it drops down pretty significantly. Okay. You make that basically level to bring that up out of out of the the wetland. And if you look, the basketball court is filled up pretty significantly. Yes. So we'd be really right around that grade. Um, All right, it says it here. I didn't read that carefully enough. Sorry about that. Um, I I, per, I I know that this will come out of the purview of uh, the design standards, or at least the standards that you know you'll be paying attention to. But um, I'm not necessarily convinced until I see some elevations how how much energy and effort and money you have to spend to shield it from Gorham Road. I would think that, being that it's going to be a quasi-municipal building, if I can if I can mm -hmm. term it that way. If it matches the the basic types of uh, styles and architecture that uh, the town has already established for its municipal buildings, then 
it could be something that you might want to showcase. So. Yeah, I, I was thinking more along. We've been talking about mechanical equipment kind of behind the scenes, where we're going to put it. It's probably not something we want to put on the roof. It's probably something we'll be putting right. on the ground. When I was thinking landscaping, it was more of to screen the mechanical equipment. I see. Okay. I thought you were talking about the building. Yeah, so. and, and I think the building, we've, we've always been talking internally that we understand it needs to match what's on the municipal campus. So we're, we're thinking something that looks like brick, if it's not brick, to kind of match everything else that, and the efforts that have been put into the Wentworth School and, and the middle school. So uh, where's the back door where the Zamboni comes out and drops the snow? <laughs> so that's, that's old school. That's old school. What do you do with it? They have um, um, pits where they melt the snow and they reuse it and recirculate that water now. So it's all internal now? It's all internal. Okay. All right. So you'll have an access valve? Yes. For yeah, it's probably, probably off the end over here. Okay. <laughs> Great. I'm showing my age, I guess. <laughs> Next thing you're going to tell me is they have, like, these aluminum sticks and stuff. No, they're carbon fiber, and they're like 300 bucks. <laughs> Don't go there. Um, if there is a confliction, I mean, even none of us here or I imagine in the school can foresee in the future a potential confliction with uh, a nighttime event at Wentworth and maybe a potentially major event at the ice arena. I mean, who wins that argument, if you will? Who gets that parking lot? I mean, is that been discussed? It, it hasn't, but that's part of what's going to come in that parking utilization study and, and that Bill is going to help us put together. We're going to work with Bill. Um, I think that's probably the key component to this whole project. So I guess, and that leads me to uh, just state that uh, it, it would seem that scheduling would, you would have to have the school somewhat involved to, Absolutely. to, to, yep. look, over, to look over the scheduling. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Just please come and introduce yourself. Thanks. My name is Chuck Bradish, uh, president of Friends of Scarborough Hockey. Okay. Um, so to answer the question relative to um, conflicts due to uh, two sporting events, um, like high school games going on, middle school game at the same time, one of the things that we talked about is the operational board, which is different from the finance, design, and construct board, what we have today, will be in place with people who will be responsible for scheduling. So one of the big things, obviously, is we'll come around around September every year. We'll need to fill the ice, right, for that season. We'll need to work with not only the other high schools, um, but Scarborough High School, right, and look at what other events are happening on campus. So we'll do a collaborative scheduling event. There will be representation on the board from the town, um, so to make sure that they have the proper visibility in it and they can manage that. So we will look to manage that as best we can. Okay, good. Um, and the... Uh the mitigation for filling in the wetlands, um, is, have, you, have you started looking for a, a site uh, to create wetlands or protect, and would that be in Scarborough? That's, that's or? something informally we've talked with uh, town council, specifically Councilor Donovan. Um, we've talked informally. We haven't talked specific, in specifics. Um, it, it's just been informal. That's something that we will be working through in, in, in the near future. And I guess my, my last question this time, sorry for taking but dominating here. Yeah. But uh, uh, what about signage? Do you have any plans for signage? We do. I'm we, particularly we sensitive to, uh, I'll just say that uh, since this will be viewed as a municipal building. Yes. So I think the same standards that you would expect municipal buildings to apply to signage, which is low key, monument type signs, um, you know, uh, attractively lit, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, nothing that would be high, pole mounted, right. drink, I, I, drink Pepsi, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that will be for inside, but <laughs> no, we envision probably something along the lines of probably what the library does. Yes. Okay. Something along those lines. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. And good luck. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks. Mr. Chairman. You uh, rejoined the board just in time. I don't think I would have thought of the Zamboni question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, we'll jump back over here to you, John, so you don't feel left I'm out good. down there. Yeah. No member, Mr. Woodard. Answered all my, asked all the questions I had, thank you. Right. And I wish you guys luck. It's a daunting task to raise that kind of money. Right. Nick? Um, my, my question, I mean, um, Mr. Wood did an excellent job, uh, but I have a couple of questions, and it has to do with the basketball court that's being removed. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it just, I mean, in general, is it not underutilized? Is it pretty much just vacant? I mean, it is, and it's something we're going to look at. If the if the need arises, if there is a need 
for that court, there's room next to the tennis courts to kind of reconstruct the basketball court. There's been talk of reconstruct a basketball court slash additional tennis court. Um, that's one of the things we're Just we're out of curiosity, I'm sure there's a council discussion, but who would be responsible for that? Constructing it? Yeah. Would uh, would that be the friends of? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and my, my other thought was, if you're losing that space back there and parking is a semi-concern, it looks to me like you might have the ability to wrap some parking spaces to the front side oh, of ab that absolutely. basketball court with your fire lane in the back. Just a yeah. thought I had yeah. when, I was, when I was listening about the parking concerns. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah right, right in this area. Yeah. yeah. And s since you are losing a few spaces next to it. Um, and then uh, I, I'm going to reiterate the point of this is um, an extremely prominent location within the <coughs> community. So, you know, as far as the way that the, you know, I can't wait to see the elevations um, because it's, you know, this is what people are going to think of when, when mm -hmm. they think of Scarborough as they drive by. And I think, yeah. you know, as long as everyone's aware of that, and I think the board's going to hold you to that standard. Uh, Absolutely. I can tell you that we've already been engaged with Gar and Turgeon Architects there. We're working mm -hmm. with them. Gar and Turgeon? Yes. Um, they've been heavily involved. They've done a ton of work with us already on this. So um, the elevations we've looked at for other potential sites have been pretty spectacular. Right. And you, you don't have the benefit of only three sides showing on this. You've, you've right. You've every every side, every side, and four, four fronts, four fronts yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, good luck. I think f at this point, let me check my notes. I think I'm pretty much all set at this point. At this stage, thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Mr. Day, Did you want to chime in on? Yeah, that? if I could just chime in on the point you raised about losing a potential basketball court and the change of the the municipal facilities. I did ha actually have a conversation with the community services director today, um, and he says part of the ongoing discussions. I think it was even raised at the council level is the expectations that the town will be held harmless. So if there is a basketball court that is needs to be modified, that's okay. But they need to. Friends of Scarborough and Arshaw, that will, Friends of Scarborough Hockey, I'm sorry about that, uh, will need to demonstrate where they'll be replacing that facility. So that, that, that will be an expectation as we move forward. So, um, so. thanks. I want to get that out. Susan? Um, <coughs> I like the idea. I think it's wonderful. It's been too long in coming. Uh, just to reiterate, because I'm so glad Michael is, is here, <coughs> elevations will be enormously important, signage will be enormously important, landscaping, I love the word hefty, will be very important. Uh, this is a low-value wetland. I love that word, low-value wetland. Is there such a thing? But anyway, so there's going to be some sort of mitigation that will be important. Um, the mechanicals are fascinating to me. I don't know how you're going to do that, since you have no bad side to this building. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you're going to do that. Pedestrian issues are really important to me. Um, what do my notes here say? Oh, runoff mitigation. Oh, yeah, I said that. Okay. Um, I like the idea. I've always, I've, I've, I've loved the idea of having an ice arena come here, and I think what's really important about having you here is that you're a hockey person, but you also know what the board wants. Right. So this should be easy. This should not be a problem. You know what what are our hot points and what right. it is that we can talk to you about, and I expect that this is going to be without any real hassle. Um, Basically, I trust the fact that you're going to do this the way it's supposed to be done. I will say that I come down from the Scarborough Library out to um, Gorham Road and wonder about all that water, all that wetland. So how we're going to process, I mean, we're going to have mitigation, we know that, mm -hmm. but how are you going to actually process what you're doing to all of that existing wetland? It's going to be very interesting for me. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And I guess that may be all I have to ask. Thank you. Thank you. So a lot of uh, good points and, and uh, questions and points of emphasis raised already. Um, I'll generally echo, to, echo those for the most part. One quick question, um, just, you know, it's not necessarily germane to um, 
the substance of our review, review, but just for purposes of kind of our expectations, what um, what is the current timeline for fundraising and sort of your overall ideal uh, yeah, timetable for moving forward? The idea would be to to have the money in hand ready to start construction in spring. Hmm. Um, that may not be fully realistic, but that's you know that's what's been driving us. Um, mm -hmm. Forcing us to get it, not forcing us, but having us get up at seven o'clock a couple of days a week to meet on this before work. Mm -hmm. um, that's our goal. Our goal is to have it open winter of next year. Um, Maybe unrealistic, may not be. Um, it all depends on how quickly we can get funds in the door. Okay. Can I ask another question? Sure. Go ahead. Um, I, I'm sorry, I did have another question. On your December 17th, um, presentation, it says on page two, under ownership, none of the three towns or schools has a home ice rink. What does that mean? Okay, so we've talked and reached out to South Portland. We reached out to Cape Elizabeth. Um, what that means is we are kind of the orphan hockey programs, Scarborough, Cape Elizabeth. We don't have any true home ice arena, like Falmouth has the Falmouth Ice Arena, right. Greeley has Falmouth Ice Arena. We go wherever there's open ice. So. You know, a couple of years ago, we were state runners up. We have no place to hang that banner. I know that, but what does ownership mean? It says Owner ownership. Oh, okay. So th the other piece of this is th the ownership piece of this is that there's going to be locker rooms dedicated to each of these towns. So they will have a buy-in or a buy or pay for a construction of that locker room. So Scarborough will have I'm a... I'm sorry, do that again? Room. They're going to have a buy-in in terms of... Buy-in. There will be funds paid for a locker room dedicated for just the South Portland hockey program. I got you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me. If I could just follow up. Sure. Would South Portland be hanging their bangers, banners? <laughs> and Absolutely. Just like Gre them. Greeley and Falmouth do together in, in the Falmouth their Family Ice Arena. Inside. <laughs> Inside. Inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That corner. Thanks. <clears throat> so just sort of reviewing reviewing things here in the spirit of kind of summarizing the uh, the sketch plan review. Obviously stormwater wetland mitigation are, are big issues and big X factors I yep. think for all of us. Um, as Susan was alluding to and you drive around that area of Storm Road, particularly since Public Works opened that up along the side side yep. of the road sides of the roads there you can see just how high that water table is. Yep. My understanding is that it's just the water table. That's not Correct. even storm runoff or anything like it's that. Just the water. So it's just the water table. So that's a very stark reminder of, of the yep. challenge that you're facing there. And you know we grapple with this on on a smaller scale with residential applications that come before us, as you well know, yep. on some of the conservation subdivision um, plans that we've seen, and we've had some recently that just on that scale have been um, have been challenging. So. Um, confident that you will come up with a way to address it, but we'll all be looking forward to seeing the details on that, as we will on uh, the uh, traffic and parking study. I'm glad to hear that there is already kind of a framework, at least a concept in place at this point around having a, a management and operation plan yep. um, so that there's a protocol for, for hopefully planning ahead and to the extent that there are potential conflicts that arise that that can be resolved and that there's a clear kind of pecking order, if you will and a process for that. Um, obviously, the new Wentworth is just still in its first year of operation, and people are still getting used to the traffic circulation around there. I know, you know I've got two kids there, and I still get a little bit crossed up at times when I go through there. So um, I do think the good news is that, at least as I understood it at the time, um, and we did give an advisory opinion on the Wentworth School, that one of the reasons why there's so much parking in that lot is that there was recognized that there was a need for um, parking for after-school events, and that there was a chronic issue with um, people coming to practices and events after school, and that that little Wentworth Drive was was not cutting it. So, um, at least my sense of it is that that was always sort of thought of as as being something that that could be available for this type of thing. Um, but that said, obviously, we'll look forward to seeing the details on the on the anticipated demand and the management around that, as well as pedestrian circulation and safety, um, uh, that, that will be critical. Um, lighting is always something that we look at, as you well know. Um, fire department, 
requirements. Uh, that was already mentioned. Um, landscaping and screening was mentioned, obviously. And again, this is all, as Susan alluded to, these are things that you're well versed in. Um, I'll just, I will reiterate that architecture will be important. And um, I would say that even to the extent that uh, there may be the potential for another building to go in between this building and Gorham Road, that I, I would <coughs> strongly recommend that you assume for now that this, this yep. facade, this elevation is going to be highly visible for the foreseeable future. And as Nick mentioned, it's going to really, um, and others alluded to, it's going to be a high profile face um, for the town. So I, I know you won't treat it as sort of the, the back of the house. And we'll look forward to seeing those elevations. Uh, similarly on signage, and I'll echo what, what uh, Mike said about that. And glad to hear that you're thinking along those lines in terms of um, something comparable to the, what the library has done. Uh, so beyond that, we'll look forward to seeing more details. Uh, do you have any questions for us or anything you any other direction that you might be looking for from us? I don't think so. I think you've, you, some of the things you brought up was really good. I know we hadn't put a lot of thought into the pedestrian point of thought process of what happens when 600 people leave at the same time. Mm -hmm. We've definitely got some work, homework to do there. Okay. Anyone else have anything? Mike. Uh, yes, Mike. Mike, and I, I'm not the engineer, certainly, and, and this is this is going to be your challenge. But my my thinking is is that in, to mitigate the impervious surface you know, to, of the building itself, you're going to probably have to leave that wet area intact between Gorm Road and the back of your building. So the yeah, thought of having another building in there, even in the distant future, is is hard for me to imagine. Well, the, the thing that we do have going for us is that it requires a fair amount of fill, six to eight feet, yeah. and that fill is all above that water level. So there's there's an opportunity to do storage in that fill area with you know subgrade detention, mm -hmm. stormwater facilities, something along that lines. That's what's always been kind of in the back of my mind, thinking about that. So I think there's a way to address those concerns, and mm -hmm. and anything we put subgrade is just less fill we'd have to bring into the site. But uh, I mean, you, are you looking at uh, uh, are you challenging yourself to imagine that that, that opportunity to have um, stormwater runoff go into the area between Gorm Road and the back of your building to not exist? Are you, is that, how you that, that has been brought up by the council as something that we should consider, that that wetland area would be in, filled in its entirety at some point down the road. Hmm. I don't understand how that answer answers your question. Well, well, what Lee is saying is, uh, if I may, for the chair, yeah. what Lee is saying is that they're approaching this as if that opportunity to use the wetland between Gorm Road and the back of their new building is not existing. So okay. they, they're, right. they're reaching okay. for a higher standard. Okay. Um, and I hope Thank you get there, but if right. you don't, I hope the town council sees itself to maybe yeah. be, be flexible on that. That's yeah. right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Great. So with that, thanks, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing more. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Is there a town planner's report? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. A few items to uh, bring the board up to speed on. One, um, let the board know that the Historic Preservation uh, Committee is having a workshop with the town council this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, they're going to start to review recommendations of the Preservation Committee uh, for a list of local historic buildings um, for consideration, as well as begin discussion around uh, various incentives uh, that might add in the preservation of the, of the structures. Another item I want to make the board aware of is staff has been working for the last, I'll say six months, but it's probably been longer than that, on a technical manual. Um, which would outline a lot of the infrastructure specifications that the town requires. Um, you know, we often get detail sheets that have uh, ADA ramps, for one example, or best management practices for stormwater. And just to have a technical manual that applicants could go to to have the town's expectations for crosswalk design, for example. Just a lot of the basic items that are on number of sheets. So it's a, again, it's a technical manual. We are hopeful to have our first draft out within the next month or two for um, 
folks to review, and certainly uh, we'll be bringing that to this board's attention. So we're hopeful that that'll make the review process for applicants uh, even more efficient, as well as for staff review to be sure that things are um, cohesive. Um, and then the final item that we want to bring to the board's attention is uh, let you know that the Long Range Planning Committee uh, has been begun work in the Higgins Beach area, had some uh, beginning discussions with the Higgins Beach Association to consider zoning updates to that neighborhood. Uh, and so that work will be going on through the winter and spring and likely culminating in uh, ordinance modifications for the board uh, to consider it come springtime. Um, it's a rough, rough timeline right now, but just to sort of give you a heads up that, that um, those discussions are occurring. Those are the items that I we want to bring to the board's attention. Thanks, Jay. Is there any planning board correspondence beyond the? Um, we did. We did receive. I'll note. Um, received a couple of uh, letters or emails regarding. Well, one uh, regarding the previously proposed expansion of Piper Shores, uh, and another regarding the proposal that we've discussed a couple of times uh, called Burnham Heights. And everyone should have copies of that. Is there any other correspondence? All right, thanks. Uh, planning board comments. Right. I've got a couple or a few quick ones. Um, picking up on uh, when Jay, when you mentioned uh, Long Ridge Planning Committee, it reminded me that it, another thing that that committee is now working on, which relates to this last agenda item that we just discussed, um, at least indirectly, um, is sort of, I guess, maybe inspired by it, I guess you would say is uh, an effort to um, develop a, sort of a more comprehensive framework for looking at municipal property and uh, both around this, the school and, and municipal campus and, and beyond. Um, and I, I guess the way at least that I see it is that this um, Scarborough hockey proposal um, has sort of spurred that or helped to spur that thinking, not that it didn't exist before, but uh, that, that uh, the way it's evolved has been sort of organic and ad hoc and it seems to be heading in a good direction, but that uh, maybe it's an indication that this would be a good time to look at um, the Long Ridge Planning Committee to incorporate that into its thinking and kind of think long term about how different town assets are being utilized and, and what the needs may be going forward. Um, Another thing I wanted to mention is that periodically, particularly when we have one or two new board members, and I guess, Mike, you would, you're technically a new board member, but um, you're not exactly, uh, not exactly a newbie. Um, we'll, we'll talk about setting up a, a couple of workshops um, to look at particular specific issues or, or areas of interest. And so I guess I just suggest to the, to the board and to staff that we give some thought to that as we head into this new year. And um, you know, we've got another board position that should be filled relatively soon. And we, maybe we can think about setting something up beyond that, um, possibly in connection with the, the uh, you know, one thought that comes to mind is the technical manual that you mentioned. But there are other things in the past we've had town, the town's legal counsel come in and talk to us about certain things. And uh, we've had other technical conversations. Uh, Beyond that, I thank you for supporting me as chair. I look forward to this year, and again, welcome Mike back. Glad to be back. Yes. Make a motion. And with that, thank you. And with that, I'll move to adjourn. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thanks.